and thank you for tuning in. This is the continuation of our live broadcast of the state funeral and burial of the late Dr. Dame Benita Gordon, Belize's first governor general. This is Marlene Cuellar and along with Major Lloyd Jones. And Major, as we can see, uh, the procession has yes. started. The cortege. Yes, the, the, the cortege is on its way. And what we just witnessed was the changing of arms. So if you notice, they had moved the sword from under the right arm over to under the left arm. And of course, given the solemn nature of this ceremony, the arms are being carried in reverse. And so we just saw the sword party, and now we're seeing the rifle party made up by senior NCOs, senior non-commissioned officers of the Belize Defense Force. And they too are carrying their arms in reverse, in keeping with the solemn nature of the ceremony. Again, a change of arms. Uh, the M16 rifle weighs about eight to nine pounds, so it can get heavy after a while. And it is the duty of the commander of the rifle party to judge more or less when the arms are a bit tired and then order a change of arms. And here we have the band being led by Van Master Campbell and the drums are draped in black signifying again the solemn nature of the ceremony. Major, it'd be very easy for people with non-military experience to miss some of the details of what's happening here from the pace that they keep to uh, the salutes that they've done. Yes. Uh, this is one of the uh, most reverent uh, training uh, that they're executing at absolutely, this time. Absolutely. It is a duty for which we are trained and it's a duty that we wish we never have to perform. But life is what it is. Uh, and so uh, we've come out to pay our highest respects uh, to Her ex Excellency. And here we have the bearer party. These are all commissioned officers and they are in slow march along the hearse followed by the hat orderlies and the honors bearer. And you will see uh, uh, an officer um, shortly with a red cushion. Uh, yes, a red cushion. And thereupon lies all of the honors received by Her Excellency. Mm -hmm. The cortege is in the slow march. And we have the quick march and we have the slow march. The quick march is 140 paces per minute. So it's, it's a brisk walk, it's a brisk pace, and each pace is supposed to be about 30 inches. This is the slow march, which is uh, slowed down, of course, to only 65 paces per minute. Arms do not swing on the slow march. The arms remain at the side. Now, as we can see, um, what was scheduled to take place was, of course, the portage would take place with uh, the the casket being carried yes. through the streets. Yes. But given this weather situation right. that we're seeing, they are accompanying the hearse right. along the way. Yes, and I'm sure that the, the bearers are happy for that one because it, it is in a, 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 an arduous physical task uh, to carry the coffins, especially for a, a long distance. Um, I'm sure an honor as well. Yes, it is an honor. Um, the, all what you're seeing here is pretty much a British military tradition. The only difference that we have is that in the British Army, depending on the stature of the person um, for whom the ceremony is being carried out, uh, you would have senior non-commissioned officers carrying the casket. In Belize, we have commissioned officers carrying the casket. And that's the only departure from the British protocol uh, with respect to funeral duties. And at this time, they have turned off of Albert Street yes. and will be shortly making their way into the compound of the government house and house of culture. Of course, this is also I believe quite symbolic as uh, the late Her Excellency also resided here. Yes. Um, up until Sir Colville Young was appointed uh, Governor General, 
this was the official residence of the Governor General. Mm -hmm. um, and the new Governor General uh, chose to remain in his own home. And then this became kind of, uh, well, became the house of culture. But uh, soldiers will tell you of the many nights they spent here because we provided the guards for, uh, for the house of culture. I mean, for the uh, Governor General. The, the, the central duty was provided by the BDF. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was known to be the kind of Governor General who will get up at 2 in the morning to check to be sure that you were, in fact, on your sentry duty. Mm -hmm. That's how she was. So whenever you were assigned to government house, you had to be at your best. Dress had to be immaculate, and your conduct had to be immaculate. Otherwise, the commandant would hear from her. Yeah. Well, you know, I think given what we have learned about her over the past few days, um, since her passing, it is of no surprise that she yes. would expect discipline from That's others, uh, as she herself led such a disciplined life. Yes. Absolutely. So in a way, this is a coming home for her. Yeah. She once hosted the Queen here as well. Absolutely, yes. Her and last visit to Belize. Yeah. And uh, we were told that they got along very well. Um, in fact, I believe in the when the Queen visited, that's when uh, she was bestowed for her second um, distinguished order. Okay, excellent. Yes. Now, uh, just to remind our viewers, that Dr. Dame Anita Gordon is what we call a double dame. She was knighted twice. Mm -hmm. The first time in 1984, where she received Dame Grand Cross in the, uh, the Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George. And then in 1985, she received the Dame Grand Cross in the Royal Victorian Order. So she is what we call a double dame. Knighted not once, but, but twice. twice. Followed closely there by the rifle party, all with arms in reverse.
means of Her Excellency will enter the premises of Government House for one last time as we bid her farewell and adieu. Now today, uh, if you're just joining us, the body was picked up from uh, the morgue and is now arriving at the House of Culture where she will lay in state for the day. Typically, under normal circumstances, this would be an opportunity for the public to come and bid their farewell. However, uh, due to the nature of the times we're in, we are expecting that only invited guests um, will be allowed to come in for the viewing. Um, the hearse has not come to uh, okay, there. We're trying to navigate this very sharp turn here. And then as soon as um, they are under the covers of the front stairs of the woman house, the bearer bear party will once more retrieve the body and walk it up the stairs and then to be placed on the cataphlac where the body will lie in state to be guarded by officers of the Belize Defense Force. And the bearer party is being commanded by Major Ramirez. Major Ramirez, yes. Um, the sword party is commanded by Major Clifton Williams and the firing party is commanded by Warrant Officer Class 2, Delton Morgan. And uh, Warrant Officer Class 2 is the second most highest rank a soldier can achieve in the Belize Defense Force. And so, as you can tell, given her stature, uh, the most senior members of the Belize Defense Force are in fact on parade, as we say. What we just saw were the hat orderlies. Yes, correct. The hat orderlies removing the hats or the berets. The commander had issued the order for a side step onto the coffin and then shortly prepare to feed. And at that point, they reach over and begin to pass the the coffin until all six have a firm grasp at which point he will now say prepare to turn and they will lift first up to about shoulder height and then the order prepare to turn and then they will lay the coffin on their shoulders the coffin will then come up the stairs foot first there we go now proceed in slow march, foot first. Now, if you notice, it's the inside legs together, the outside legs together. It is one of the few times that soldiers are allowed to march out of step. And the reason for that is the body has a natural sway when we walk. And so if they were both, if they were all doing left together and right together, the casket would be swaying. And so to keep it steady, it's inward, outward. Inward, outward. We just heard the national anthem being played by the Belize Defense Force Band. Which is preceded by the first verse of God Save the Queen. And as a former representative of the Queen, she is bestowed that honor of having that played. Absolutely. And the members of the Belize Defense Force during the playing of the national anthem and even now are in a royal salute. And this is the highest honor that Absolutely. one can be afforded. Absolutely. The salute, as you know, is a military tradition that distinguishes uh, loyalty and trust. Uh, and without a weapon, the, the arm is raised with the palms open to signify I have no weapon and I mean no harm. It's a compliment. Uh, with the weapons, it is presented up front, as you can see there by the rifle party. And the officers would have the swords drawn but pointed down. 
So it is how you build loyalty and trust, an, an old tradition. Uh, and of course, that has now uh, morphed into a cere ceremonial. And there we have the officers standing to attention, swords drawn, pointed downwards. Heads up, in solemn respect to Her Excellency Dr. Dame Minita Gordon. stairs. Coming first to a halt and then turning inward and lowering the coffin. Side, taking side paces up the stairs, keeping always the coffin in a leveled position. And as we mentioned earlier, this is a coming home of sorts Absolutely. for Her Excellency. Absolutely. Coming back home to her former place of residence. Government House, now known as the House of Culture. The sword party and the rifle party remaining in the salute, in the royal salute. Inside. And what the, the Biara party has now made its way into the room where Her Excellency will lie in state. And She will be placed on the catafalque. Where she will lay in state for the duration of the day. We're told the viewing uh, will continue until two this afternoon. And of course, uh, she will be under guard the entire time. Prepare to lower and now lowered onto the catafalque. Party now marches off in quick time as the body has now been placed on the catafalque, yeah. lying in state. Yeah. And just to give you an idea of what will be happening today, there will be a brief ceremony. that will take place here at the House of Culture. There will be invited guests that will come in to be able to, to view the party, view the body, the sword party.
And there is. We now have the the honor guards, all commissioned officers of the Belize Defense Force, taking their posts as they will stand guard whilst the body lie in state. Once they have arrived at their position, they will salute. And there's this royal salute. Turn and face outward and then rest on his arm, reverse, heads bowed. And for the entire time that the body remain here, lying in state, it will remain under guard of these four commissioned officers. And so what we'll do is take a very quick break as we transition for the ceremony and the arrival of the invited guests.
Good afternoon and welcome to our live broadcast. Uh, this is day one of three days of coverage of the state funeral for the late Dr. Dame Elvira Minita Gordon. I'm Marlene Coyar. Major Jones. This is uh, the plane that is bringing in the body of the late uh, first Governor General of Belize. Yes, Marlene. Um, uh, we just had touchdown and the aircraft is now taxiing to um, its final resting place after which we expect that the remains of the late Dr. Minita Gordon uh, will be received by the official party and then escorted by members of the Belize Defense Force uh, to Belize City to the Coe's funeral home. You may have heard in, in the recap of the activities that's scheduled between today and Wednesday, the arrival of the body only marks the, the start of uh, the three days of uh, celebration of the life of the late Dr. Dame Manita Gordon. Um, her body will be received and properly dressed, after which there will be a, a ceremony that will take place here. But what we are going to be seeing here today really is the the official welcome home, if you will, by the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, and I understand uh, Senator uh, Smith, uh, who is a member of, of uh, the National Assembly as well. So those are the four officials um, of the government of Belize who will welcome home uh, Her Excellency the late Governor General. Um, there's also uh, we expect also members of her family to be here to welcome her home as well. Um, and then after that formality has been uh, done, uh, then the body will proceed to Belize City. Now, Major, um, this is typically an event that is attended by a number of uh, officials as well as foreign representatives. Uh, but given the time that we are in, it's being transmitted virtually uh, to all of you at home across the world so that you can uh, be a part of this occasion. And a great deal has been made, uh, Marlene, about her uh, being the first female Governor General in the Commonwealth. And I don't think that we ought to allow that significance of that uh, to pass us by. Um, and I think it speaks very well about the Right Honorable George Price and his government at the time who in going to independence, a young nation, a nation going to independence under the threat of invasion by our neighbor in furtherance of their claim, was bold enough, was progressive enough to still name a woman as the head of state, as our first governor general. An absolutely progressive move uh, when you look at uh, gender relations since then. Regrettably, I don't think we have made, we have kept strides with that progressive start um, to our, our independence. Uh, but we do see a lot of um, women now coming to the fore. There's been a lot of appointments since the change of government for women, but those are all gifted by men, Marlene. Uh, I think it's time now for us to, to re-examine where we are in that gender relations. But to make the point, we started off towards independence in a very bold and progressive move when it came to gender uh, equality by naming somebody such as Dr. Deminita Gordon as our first Governor General. No doubt a trailblazer. I think uh, echoing your point that the decision was made to appoint her uh, as the Governor General, knowing as well that she would be the first female Governor General in the British Commonwealth at that time. Of course, this is a, a very different time ago. Um, and as a young independent nation, that was one of the pivotal um, and monumental decisions made so early on. As we said, uh, there is going to be an official ceremony taking place here. As we were walking in, we saw uh, the BDF uh, preparing as well. Yes. Um, a state funeral, as you know, is accorded by the government of Belize. Uh, and that decision is made by the Prime Minister and his cabinet um, as to whether or not we accord a state funeral or an official funeral. Uh, state funerals are reserved for former or sitting Governor Generals and Prime Ministers um, and for sitting members of the House. Not former members of the House, but sitting members of the House. So those are the three categories that are accorded state funerals and this is one such occasion. 
The protocol is taken care of by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, their protocol unit, and all of the official military decor is provided by the Belize uh, Defense Force. Uh, and now we have uh, the Bearer Party, uh, Marlene, that mm -hmm. is now about to make its way to retrieve the body from the aircraft, to first dress the body, uh, dress the coffin in the flag of Belize, and with her awards. Um, and thereafter, there would, have, there would be, the formal process would have begun. We are going to be shifting gears in just a moment. Uh, what we'll do is take a very quick break. And when we come back, uh, we are going to uh, bring you live from the PGIA, uh, the ceremony as it unfolds. So we'll shift gears and we have uh, some videos and pictures lined up of the late dame. And we'll go to that now. We are live at the House of Culture, Government House, here in Belize City for day two of the burial and funeral services for the late Dr. Dame Manita Gordon. Yes, uh, Marlene, a, a very solemn day. Uh, day two of three, uh, three days of mourning declared by Prime Minister Bresenio and his government. And we are awaiting the arrival of some dignitaries so that we can commence uh, the, today's ceremony. Mm -hmm. So far, we have had the arrival of the mayor of Belize City, mm -hmm. Mayor, uh, mayor Wagner. Yes, we've also had the arrival of the pres president of the Senate, uh, Caroline Trench Sandeford, and the Speaker of the House, Madame Valerie Smith. Yes. And uh, as we can see, it is a, it's like the, the weather itself calls for um, the event. And 
the flag is flying at half mass as it should be across the country during these three days of mourning and the late Dr. De Manita lies in state in the state dining room in the government house. Yes. And uh, the body lies in state, guarded by four commissioners. Absolutely cautious. We, uh, today's event, the viewing of the body, will be limited to invited guests alone. As you can see in the state dining room, uh, the late Dr. De Manita Gordon is uh, on her catafalque, uh, being guarded uh, by four BDF officers. And there she will be until two o'clock this afternoon, when today's viewing will end. At this time, we have uh, arriving family, the family members of the late Dr. De Manita Gordon, um, the chief mourner, her youngest sis sibling, Miss Kelora Franklin, who's making her way out of the vehicle, and she has been assigned an aide de camp. Yes, an aide de camp. Uh, an ADC is uh, a military officer who is assigned for special duty. The Governor General has an ADC, um, and that is uh, Major Neal. Mm -hmm. uh, and the duty of the ADC is to liaise with the family first and foremost, mm -hmm. but also to guide the family through the protocols related to such an event. Yes. As you can imagine, it is already a stressful event, yeah. and uh, the ADC provides comfort to the family keeps them in line with the protocol mm -hmm. and in an unofficial capacity is there also as a bodyguard especially for the governor general and arriving as well is uh, the brother of the late dr de Minita gordon robert reyes and there behind him you can see the aide de camp dr Antep young they'll make their way in um, there is a designated area where a brief ceremony will be held. It is separate from the viewing area. Yes. Um, and as we said, for invited guests only. Mm -hmm. And we seem to have some uh, more guests coming shortly as soon as we are able to work out the logistics of the vehicles. second day of mourning in honor of Her Excellency Dr. Dame Minita Gordon, a double dame, a woman of high credentials and accomplishments, and one of Belize's most favored daughters, yeah. will be laid to rest tomorrow at the end of the three days of mourning. All right. Arriving now, we have Honorable Dolores Valderamas Garcia who is one of the invited guests for today. It's interesting when you think about it, Major, as I said earlier, um, the arrival of the body here is really coming full circle. Uh, the late Dr. Dame Manita coming home, this would have been her view. Uh, in the mornings when she resided here yes. at the government house and uh, now she lies here as Belize uh, accords her one of the greatest honors of a state funeral indeed Marlene um, she resided there for many many years once her official residence mm -hmm. and uh, she is now home for the last time before a grateful nation lays her to rest tomorrow.
This time uh, we have the guards who are guarding the body of the late Dr. Dame Minita Garden are being changed over. And this will be done throughout the day and throughout the night uh, to give relief uh, to the guards. The sword in the carrying position, the relieved officer followed closely by the relieving officer. The relieved officer takes a right turn and the relieving officer takes a left turn, comes around the catafalque and now will shortly take up his position in one of his, what will be one of his most honorable duty, that of standing guard over the body of Her Excellency Dr. Dame Minita Garden. And there is the royal salute and about face shortly. And now to rest on his arm and his head bowed. As you noted, Major, this will this release of officers will take place periodically throughout the course of the day. Yes, uh, it helps with fatigue, as you can imagine, standing still in one position for any length of time. The legs begin to get numb, um, so it is a task. Mm -hmm. And so the commander ensures that there is timely relief. Um, again, all done in keeping with the dignity of the ceremony. And then we have another guard about to be changed over. He moves off from his post, followed immediately behind by the relieving officer. In so March, 65 paces per minute. Major, at this time we're told that uh, all the invited guests have arrived and that the ceremony should be starting very shortly. We will take you over to that as soon as it starts. In the meantime, what we're seeing is the release of officers, yes, the changing, changing of, of the guards guard. in the state dining room here at the government house.
yes. They use the royal salute. That's correct. Uh, given her high office, a representative of the Queen herself, um, she is afforded a royal salute as opposed to a general salute. And tomorrow she will receive 21 firing of the guns, 21 gun salute. We often, um, and mistakenly so, confuse the three volleys of the rifles to mean a 21 gun salute but it, in fact it is not mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll have a proper 21 gun salute and not three volleys of the rifles mm -hmm. and so the final guard is about to be changed over followed immediately by the relieving guard both in slow time of my family, I'd like to extend my personal condolences to Kelora and her family in the passing of our dear day, Melita. May her sweet soul rest in peace. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister, day, Minita. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love the companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth. And by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by all sins are justly angered. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your eyes to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and be made with you always. Amen.
followed by the individual viewing of the invited guests here today. The viewing will be led by Mayor of Lee City, Mayor Bernard Wagner. And then each invited guest will then enter the state dining room for the viewing of the body. So with the conclusion of the prayer, what happens now is that the invited guests will make their way across the hallway into the state dining room where they will participate in the viewing of the body. Major, as you noted earlier, when the body lies in state, it is typically an opportunity for the public to say farewell to the person being honored. And I, feel, uh, I feel almost as if she has been shorted by, not, uh, by the public not being able to come in and pay their last respects. But I'm sure she would understand the times that we're in and why this has been necessary. We now have the mayor of Belize City paying his respects to the late Dr. Dave Anita Gordon. The invited guests for today include and the mayor, as you just saw, the speaker of the House of Representatives, President of the Senate, uh, the, a representative of the Girl Guides was invited as that was a cause which she was very passionate about and grew Absolutely. up as a Girl Absolutely. Guide herself. Yes. Um, and uh, there are other special invited guests at the request of the family. Yes. We saw a representative of the Senate as well. Day two of three days of national mourning in honor of the late Dr. Dame Minita Gordon. Her body now lie in state at her former place of residence. Mm -hmm. On guard are four commissioned officers of the Belize Defense Force standing on their swords, their heads bowed. And here comes her sister, her youngest sister, who shared with us yesterday that her memories of uh, Dr. Damonita Gordon was one that she strove for excellence. She said that in the final year of her life, she would overhear Dr. Damonita Gordon praying for the people of Belize before wow. she went to bed wow. at what would have been 89 and she turned 90 at the end of December. I think it is so symbolic of her. When you look at all that she has done and all that she has accomplished, it was an entire life spent in service to her country. Uh, and it is no wonder um, that she has received such high honors. And it is no wonder that we, as a grateful nation, now bid her farewell in the highest way we know how, a state 
funeral. Dr. Dame Benita Gordon became Belize's first Governor General in 1981, where she continued to serve in that capacity until 1993. She was, before being appointed the first Governor General of Belize, in fact, the first trained psychologist. She received her PhD in psychology in Canada and had given years of service as well within the education sector. I imagine if today was a public event, there would be a number of people who would come in who have benefited from her scholarship programs and who have benefited from what we know some of her community service in being able to help to raise funds whether it was for people who had uh, individual needs or for organizations that she supported like the Red Cross or the Girl Guides Association. Here we have her brother. Uh, Dr. Demonita Gordon was uh, the eldest of six and this is her brother Robert Reyes. Seems to be speaking to the guard. Are they allowed to respond? Um, technically, no. Uh, but you'd imagine out of politeness, out of yes. Politeness, yes. Yeah. It's not the norm to hold a conversation, but if somebody speaks to you, you can't be impolite either. Yeah. And especially at a moment like this, when uh, the brother probably just wanted to say a kind word of thanks uh, which is most welcome. And even in a time of mourning, um, he still has the, the decor to say thank you. Mm -hmm. When in fact it is we who should be saying thank you, not just to Dr. Damienita Gordon, but also to her family as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we have people in public office, we sometimes tend to forget that there are people who support them, their family. And they too sometimes unwillingly uh, are made to make the sacrifices. Um, so we truly are, are appreciative of her family, her sister and her brother for being here and for giving their sister to us in national service. And they are also very appreciative as well. I know I spoke with uh, her sister, Kelora Franklin, and she said, you know, I just want everything to go as smoothly as possible for her whatever I can do to help to make it as smooth as possible for her. I think it, uh, she knew of her sister's love for this country and clearly appreciates the reverence with which she is being honored at this time. Madam Speaker of the House, paying her last respects, Continues. I do want to take a moment to uh, speak with the speaker, uh, Madame Valerie Woods, um, just about being invited and being a part of this occasion. What does that signify for you? Um, you know, growing up, I didn't have the opportunity to personally meet Dame Anita Gordon, but as a young girl, she is who we knew to be the, the head of state. And as you get older and you recognize not only was she the head of state, but she was the first woman in the region, it strikes a particular chord for girls, 
for women and for myself in particular who strongly believe in women in leadership so it's I'm deeply humble it's a respect that she deserves and I'm saddened by the occasion but humbled to have witnessed this today thank you and we're at this time joined by the president of the senate carolyn trench sandefur to talk about what this moment symbolizes for you it's certainly a profound moment um, it's one for me of inspiration to know that dr dame anita gordon came before us she was a trailblazer imagine being the first governor general without a template but being a woman as well um, highly qualified and so highly intelligent um, very humble i met her twice um, one to renovate this very building that we're in and another to renovate the house she moved into um, when her successor took place so it was very um, inspirational like i said and certainly a profound moment and one that i will remember from your interactions with her um what did you pick up as as uh, about her personality and who she was someone who had inner strength and um, that was very clear um, someone who was very confident in herself and someone who was very humble meticulous yes knew what she wanted i remember having the conversations about repairs and so on and so forth but certainly someone who cared about Belize, who put Belize first. And I think her, her um, time as our Governor General was certainly one um, that was stellar in terms of um, the work that she did and the precedent that she set. What do you think the country can learn from her experience? Absolutely. Like I said, she set the temp she had no template. So certainly um, she was a trailblazer. But I think women in particular and young girls I see, um, they can see her as a as an inspiration, a role model, someone who came from very humble um, beginnings, but someone who made it to the highest um, level of office, that of the Governor General, Head of State, um, that is an inspiration and I think she represents that to, to all our young girls today. Take a panton, paying her last respects. And uh, Dr. Dame touched um, a number of people. We have uh, um, Ozzy the Clown, officially known as. Corporal Canul mm -hmm. uh, posted to Facebook that uh, he said, I don't have a picture of the dame or with the dame, but I remember her giving us black cake on Christmas Day. After making sure we were not asleep on duty, I was a young soldier then. It was December 1987. Ozzy the Clown, also known as Corporal Canul Payne, respect to Dr. Dame Benita Gordon, and no doubt remembering that delicious black cake. And here we have Senator Elena Smith. And also the president of the Belize National Teachers Union who uh, just paid her respect. Of course, we know that one of the things, um, one of her many contributions was to that of the education sector. She worked um, as a lecturer at what was the governor's, um, the government teaching school, um, what we eventually. Yeah. And she also uh, traveled outside of, uh, into other districts to be able to teach as well.
This is another. Yeah, that'll change of the of the garden. to hear um, about what this occasion means and symbolizes for them. It's certainly a very solemn occasion. I can recall I may have been about 12 or 13 years old when the Minita was appointed as our first Governor General of Belize. She was one of the few women I saw in, in political leadership at the head of state in our country and I remember I was certainly touched by her quiet dignity, uh, her integrity, and just her grace in which she um, served the country. And so I feel very honored and privileged to pay my final respects. What do you think that Belizeans can learn from the life that she has lived? I think she has left a legacy of service, um, and she did so in such a very unassuming way. She understood her role, um, she executed it in the interest of the Belizean people, and I think more of us need to emulate that kind of humility in service. Thank you very much. Okay. And we're continuing at this time to learn more from uh, our invited guests, and I'm sure you had some personal experiences as well. Um, as to what your, your fondest memory would be of yes. the late uh, Dr. Dame Anita Gordon. Yes. Well, first of all, Marlene, thank you. I'd like to say that back in 1981, at the dawn of independence, I thought, of course, I am, I am very much partial in this, in this, you know, I thought that it was a brilliant and very forward-looking move for the then Premier um, to have named uh, de Minita as our first Governor General. It was a great honor for women and something that back in those days wasn't usual, it wasn't common, you know? So I thought it was, it showed forward-looking um, grasp of the role that women would begin to play more in an independent Belize. As you can see this morning, Many of us paying respects are, are women, the Speaker of the House, the, the President of the Senate, you know. And I'm very, very um, honored to be here because I know it is not something that we can do with great crowds because of the social distancing. But I'd like to say that um, apart from being well-educated and an educator herself, I found De Minitas to be so quiet in her dignity. My fondest memory of her is that she sometimes she used to walk down with a nice big handbag, right down Albert Street and down Queen Street, and have on a nice broad brim hat and bright colors. But always she carried herself with such dignity, and she fulfilled her role in a way that I believe all Belizean women and all our population should emulate. Um, as you know, we're a, a member of the Commonwealth, and as such, um, she embraced that role and she was able to do it also with a common touch for and love for the Belizean people that all of us will always remember and, and so we must honor her memory. If there is a lesson that Belizeans should take away from her life and service, what do you think that should be? I think it should be that we can all play a role with humility 
with dignity, with compassion, and with a kind of servant leadership um, that she definitely embraced and at all times um, we were able to view it as Belizeans. So I think that is, that is how I would answer that. Thank you very much. And so there we heard uh, from two women of the House of Representatives as to uh, what it means to be a part of today's occasion. I think Honorable Dolores uh, clearly spoke of what we had said before. You know, it's, it's a bit sad that she's not able to have the public come out and, and say, uh, pay their respects in the way that would typically be done in a state funeral or when a body lies in state. Well, I was um, extremely happy to see that the Honorable um, Dolores Balaramos Garcia recognized the progressive move that mm -hmm. the, the Prime Minister made in 1981. And again, to put things in, in, into context, um, uh, currently in the Commonwealth there are 54 countries, Canada, Australia, are considered to be the progressive of the bunch. And it, when you look at what Belize did in 1981 compared to Canada and Australia, it took the Canadians 53 years to get their first female governor general and it took the Australians 66 years to get their first governor general and Belize did it in 1981 the very first governor general moving to independence even with the threat of an invasion still appointed a woman head of state I think it is phenomenal and I think it is a recognition of who she was then um, and even in 1981, she was this towering figure, yeah. accomplished, talented, gifted, and always in service to her country. So I am, I am, I am honored to have uh, known her yeah. um, and to have served her um, as a member of the Belize Defense Force. We are live with the broadcast of the funeral. Um, we wanted to know what the your participation in today's event as an invited guest means and signifies for you? Well, first I would like to congratulate the government of Belize for the kind and quality of send-off they have um, given their attention to for Dame Minita Gordon. And um, at the time when she was Governor General, I remember her appointment, um, not very young, and so the kind of organization here that included all women of the parliament to come and pay their respects in this way it speaks volume and i am grateful to be able to be here to do just that give my respects to a great woman and to know that she has paved the way for others before me who were after her for me and those who are to come after me and so i wanted to have been able to also see um, Senator Bennett here and Senator Erica Jang. And so when we celebrate women, we include all women. And when you uh, hear of the story of her life and, some, and the many accomplishments that she had, what do you think is, is the greatest takeaway of her legacy? For me, the greatest takeaway of her legacy is the fact that she was present and involved at a time when the superstructures dictated that it was men who govern uh, a young nation. And so the greatest takeaway, the greatest impact of her life is her existence being in the role she occupied at the time she did so. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Again, I, it's not lost on anyone how she has been a trailblazer in representing women in leadership, uh, women who defy what is uh, status quo at that time. I mean, we're talking 1981 when she was appointed as the Governor General. Um, all her professional accomplishments within her career took place before that, and it really just was a different time, and we take it so much for granted. And I, as the Honorable Dolores Valderrama said earlier, there was a quiet dignity about her uh, and she touched people in, in such a gentle way. Yeah. Uh, she was very strict though, I can tell you um, uh, my involvement with the BDF here, she did not tolerate uh, nonsense and, and that is what a young nation needs. It, needs. it needs love, it needs caring, yes, but it also needs discipline and she was the kind of person that would ensure that if you had something to do, you were going to do it. Not just do it, but you were going to do it to the best of your ability. And if you didn't do it that way, 
you would hear from her. Um, and so there was this thing about her um, in which she had touched so many lives. Um, and again, this is so fitting that we send her off in this way. You know, I, I, I think one of the things that I do remember um, was definitely, and it was triggered by, um, I believe it was Honorable Dolores Valderamas Garcia who, who noted her colorful way of dress. She always wore vibrant colors and her full hat. Um, it was a part, for some reason, that's a memory that I, I seem to have of her. Um, and I think that it definitely had to be. If I know one thing, it's, it speaks to her, her character as well. Yeah. Always carried herself with such dignity. Yes. Well put together, um, always on time, punctual. Whenever we had functions at the beat, she was there on time. If you said nine, it's nine. Yeah. Um, so she was, she was really what we needed as a young yeah. nation. Uh, to help to guide us and to move us forward and um, she gave us so much and uh, it's only right that we, we again pay the kind of respect that we're paying and again to see all of our women of high office um, also showing respect and recognizing that she was in fact one of the trailblazers mm -hmm. paving the way for, for the Belizean woman and so um, a life well lived. Yes. Uh, as we are standing here, we still have uh, the invited guests making their way through the state dining room. They are paying their respects um, as we, the nation, bid farewell to our first Governor General, the late Dr. Dame Manita Gordon. And again, just to remind our viewers that today is the second day of national mourning. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday was the first declared by Prime Minister Brisenio and his cabinet. Uh, three days of national mourning. Flags are to be flown at half mass, all in celebration of the life of Dr. Dame Minita Gordon. And we have uh, one of the invited. Yes, of course. You are a, a relative? Uh, close, to close to the family. Yes. Tell us your name and, of course, uh, I am Pastor Suzette Masaya from Marais Ministry. <laughs> Now, Suzette, um, what does it mean for you to be a part of today's event? Oh, it's an honor to be a part of this event. I became Miss Dr. Dame Benita Gordon, hairdresser, from she became Governor General. And I saw the other part of her that was not being a Governor General. And three things she told me, this was before I was even a pastor, serve God, serve others, and serve our country. It's one thing I can say is that we know women have very special relationships with their hairdressers. And, and so you really would have gotten to see a completely different side of her. What do you think um, people never really got exposed to um, that you did when you had that relationship with her? Because she's very private, yeah. she's modest, she, and she's, very, she's a very articulate woman. Yeah. Yes. And with your interactions with her, what do you what do you think you've learned the most from your interactions with her? Well, the most of all, what she said, she told me, education. And women need to set the standards for our country. That's what she left me with. What's your fondest memory? The fondest memory with her was one day when she came to the shop, she said, instead of doing here, let's go and eat. And we went for lunch. Yes. That must have been a nice surprise. Yes, it was. And after that, we did the hair. <laughs> you still took care of business. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your reflection. Thank you. Oh, I like that story. <laughs> because it still has to get done. That's right. That's right. Let's do hair, but uh, let's do lunch, but don't forget the hair. <laughs> Yes. So, um, I think at this time, we have seen uh, most of the invited guests uh, pass their way through the state dining room to be able to um, say their farewell. Uh, as, of, as we've mentioned before, this is our second day of coverage where the body lies in state here at the government house. They, she will be here until 2 this afternoon yes. where she will be transported back to the morgue. Yeah. Yes. And then... Uh, we start off again tomorrow for the for the actual interment mm -hmm. at Lord Register Cemetery. Yeah. Yes.
tomorrow what we will see, and just to give you a bit of a preview, um, uh, the procession will take place from the Swing Bridge uh, to the cathedral just across from here. Yes. And um, hopefully the weather permits yes, that we can we, see the cortege yes, as it's meant, to, meant yes, to be. That's correct. Yeah. And the ecumenical service will take place there, followed by the procession to the Lord Bridge Cemetery where the burial will take place. And of course, that is the particular moment where there are a number of, uh, I'm sure you can outline for us, um, a number of activities that will take place from the salute to the flyover. That's correct. Um, as part of the, the grand send off for somebody of her high office would be the 21 gun salute, followed by a fly pass mm -hmm. by the Belize Defense Force Air Wing. Um, and then uh, she would be interred, mm -hmm. and uh, that would have been the end of the three days of mourning officially. Okay. So we are going to be live with our continued coverage uh, tomorrow morning, um, and so we appreciate you tuning in. This is us uh, signing off. As we had mentioned earlier, the body will remain here. It will lie in state until 2 p.m., However, uh, it is not a public event, so it is uh, invited guests only that are coming in. But in the meantime, feel free to share with us your personal experiences and encounter with the late Dr. Damonita Gordon, and we will be sure to share those. Absolutely. Since the public cannot be here, we will bring it to you, and of course, you can bring us your stories as well. Yeah? Thank you very much, Major. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, we shall see you folks tomorrow. All right. Have a good afternoon.